You're fired! I was just trying to make the violin a little bit better. Hey guys! So the other day I bought that $100 violin and uh, you know at the time we were kind of thinking about different ways, different things I could do with the instrument but uh, I thought what's going to be more interesting is to really find out why it doesn't sound so good. So I, it's going to become a little guinea pig. Now I'm just going to play it again so you guys can can hear it. Um, it's out of tune. Okay. Totally out of tune, so I'm going to tune it. using is one of my Fleuriel carbon fiber bows. They're really beautiful. They're timber veneer. Um, Fleuriel. Can you see? So the bow is worth $550. So it's worth more than the VSO or about the same as the VSO with the service. But it's definitely much better value. I've actually seen bows that are $1,000 that don't play as well. Anyway, lads, I'm just going to play it again and I'll discuss the sound a little bit and then I'm going to get behind uh, what the structural things are that are holding up the instrument from sounding really good. It's okay, but it's it's got that slight tinniness to it. Um, you know, if we try, if I show you a different instrument, you can see what the difference is. One second. So let me play this violin again. Now we're going to play the one thousand five hundred dollar. Violin. So this is the $1,500 Garibaldi Master Violin. I, I have other instruments in that price range, but I'm just using it as an example. And uh, this is the VSO with a, with a good quality setup, but you can still hear the quality of the sound is very different. So it's got something shallow and slightly trumpety about it. Especially on the G, you can really hear it. So there's a big difference. The really big difference is the is the brilliance in the sound and the kind of clarity and that kind of richness in the sound. This this is just a very basic sort of a sound. There's just no comparison on the open string. Anyway. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually open up the $100 violin and we're going to have a look inside and we're going to see the reason behind why it's not working so well. I'll also try to show an open violin that's of a higher level so that you can see the difference between um, a cheap violin and a better quality violin. So the hard part, you've seen me open up a violin before. Uh, the hard part is going to be, I'm, so normally I use natural hide glue on, 
on instruments and that glue is kind of reversible but I'm quite certain that on these instruments they actually used, used a PVA glue which is a much harder glue that is a lot more difficult to um, to open so it'll be fun anyway I'm gonna go to the workshop now and we'll have a look and see inside okay so here we go I'm going to firstly take off the strings and then I'm gonna open up the body now my theory here is that the top plate is way too thick and that's actually meaning that it doesn't uh, it doesn't vibrate as easily or doesn't move as easily as it should the other thing is that maybe the base bar isn't so good so we'll see um yeah once i open it so first of all let's take off some strings and uh and see why this instrument isn't sounding so good <clears throat> Bridge. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Now, time for my opening knife. We'll do the scary, the scary look. That's it. Everyone's freaked out. Here comes the violin maker wielding the knife so I'm gonna like I said I th I'm hoping that they use the right kind of glue but I'm not holding my breath oh yeah oh, oh no it's coming it's opening okay let's go here with it oh <laughs> no it's not opening okay it's splitting the wrong way I have to be very careful here. Oh man. Well, at least I mean, if I break it, it's not not too expensive an instrument. Oh god. Ugh. Okay. This is horrible. Look at look at the edges. Like the edges here. Normally, you have something called a scoop. And then an edge, uh, which is something I'm I'm making on my new instrument right now. I'm, I'm I've, I've finished this scoop, and then I'm going to work on the edge. But uh, this instrument has no scoop; like it's just like flat. So my guess is that they just used a rough, like a sander, and just sanded it all. That's not how you make a violin. Wish me luck. I might, like I said, I might break something. Hopefully, I won't. I do actually want to put it back together at the end and uh, see if I can get some improvements. Can I also say that I did actually? Uh, I have seen um, hundred dollar violins that do look a bit better. Uh, I did choose this one be because it looks particularly bad. Because I want to make sure that um, that you can see what can happen when you buy the wrong kind of instrument. So I actually picked one that looked a bit scary, but where the sales letter that was on there, you know, made it look like it was actually a quality instrument. This is not splitting quite the way I wanted to. Okay, but you know, I'll do my best. Is this timber actually joined? I don't know, I can't tell. It's actually coming apart quite okay. Maybe I shouldn't say anything, that might be my famous last words. At least I'm touching wood. Actually I'm not, I'm touching synthetic varnish. Touch synthetic varnish. Oh my god, that is so scary. It's not even making a noise, like normally it's supposed to make this cracking noise, but because the glue they used is so, like, elastic, it kind of, <laughs> it's just kind of not making a noise at all. Ooh. This is stuck down good and hard, this bit. 
So this is called the saddle down here and it looks like they've glued it down I don't know what with but it's solid. Come on you can do this. Okay, it's time to break out the hammer. Here we go. Now this could go badly wrong. Ah! Jeez, it's just not. Come on, you can do this. Come apart already. It's seriously not very, oh, it came apart. Now I've just got to split it open around the neck. Another scary area. The scary moment of truth is about to arrive. Oh. Oops. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't supposed to happen. Okay. Check. Oh, it's plywood! Okay, look at that! It's a plywood top plate. I can't even fix it. Whoa, dudes! Look at that! That is incredible. That's actually plywood and it's entirely different. So you can see the different layers, like one going this way, one going that way. The base bar has like the worst shape in the world. It's not even shaped like a base bar. Oh my God. Look at the amount of glue pasted onto the uh, top plate. That's unbelievable. I can just imagine how it would go down in the factory. You're fired! But sir, I, I, I just had this glue and, and my brush and you took six seconds to glue the violin when it should have taken you five. But it's so hard to spread the glue that fast. And I was trying to make the violin just a little bit better. Nobody cares what it looks like on the inside. What matters is how it looks on the outside. I, I was just trying to make the violin a little bit better. We don't want neat we went fast. It's so hard to put on the glue neatly that fast. Not neater, we went faster. Five seconds per violin. That's it, you're fired. Check this out. Whoa, that, it, this is scary stuff. So, the reason the instrument can't sound properly, one big reason is that the top is made of plywood. You can't actually tell from the outside that easily because it's been varnished. The sides have been varnished by a, an opaque varnish. So you can actually not easily tell. Now that I look more carefully, I can kind of see it, but it's not that easy to tell. Um, the base bar is scary. So this is actually a base bar that's a little bit better. It's actually still not perfect. Like it's still not quite the way I want a base bar to be, but you, you should be able to see. Now the, the timber is, on, on good instruments, the timber is spruce. And you, you want kind of alpine spruce. And that, that's spruce. So, so what happens in mountain regions is that quite often they'll have really cold winters and they'll quite often have fairly warm summers. So with the cold winters, see the darker lines? The darker lines are the winter grains. So, so that means that the darker lines are how the tree grew in winter when it was cold. And the lighter lines are the summer grains. So it's how the tree grew when it was warm in summer. And so it obviously grows a lot more in summer because there's more nutrients, uh, there's, you know, the ground isn't frozen and it grows a lot better. So it makes the, 
it actually makes the timber quite flexible this way, like sideways. But up and down, uh, because the, the summer grains are nice and soft, the winter grains are hard. And, and so basically, the plate moves very easily sideways. It moves sideways, but not lengthwise this way, because the winter grain's hard. And, uh, but on this instrument, it's plywood, you know, and it's heavy. It's like, you know, it's heavy plywood. There's layers of glue in between. And, uh, and so the, the, the timber, the plate is actually really rigid sideways. And, uh, and that'll stop the, the plate from vibrating nicely and creating good sound. Like this, this plate, for example, if I, if I was to kind of twist it, See, I'm kind of twisting it at the moment. It, it actually moves really easily sideways. Um, can, can you see how it... I don't want to do it too hard because I don't want to break anything. I don't want to be responsible for breaking a 170-year-old violin. It's my violin. I'm going to sell it eventually, but, uh, but I don't want to break it first. Okay. Uh, with this one, same thing. Okay, I'm, I'm trying... You can, it's still moving. But it's a real has a real rigidity to it, and that's going to stop the instrument from sounding good. The instrument needs to be able to move really freely this way. Um, also, obviously, it doesn't have the edges. The edges are important, like the raised edges, to to kind of uh, help create with a good sound. Uh, next, the the back of the instrument is supposed to be made of a different timber, and yes, on the outside, the timber is different. But it's only the outside layer. As soon as you get inside, it's the same kind of plywood. And the timber, instead of being carved by hand, has actually been pressed into place. And if you want to see how cheaply they made it, so this stuff here around the, the second layer here is called the lining. And the lining is supposed to be firstly like neatly inserted into here. It hasn't been done that. That hasn't been done. But even at the end here, it's just folded around. It is just pathetic. And then these bottom blocks are supposed to be neatly cut. And these ones are just like, like, <laughs> they're just square blocks. It's horrible. Um, yes, this instrument is officially horrible. Uh, it's definitely a VSO. It's... It's probably one of the worst I've seen. It's it's really bad. Um, let me show you inside and other instruments so you can kind of see a little bit. An old French violin. It's a Viome copy. Uh, and you can see the workmanship inside is way, way neater. You know, it's quite old again, like this is quite old. But take a look at the difference in the in the workmanship. This one is really roughly put together. And this one is quite a lot neater. It's still not perfect, but it's definitely a whole lot better. So yeah, so this, this has been really, really poorly put together. And, and that's the kind of thing that can happen when you buy these VSOs. Um, the other issue I have too is that I, I think these plates these plates might be too thick. Oh no, they're they're about three millimeters thick, but they are um, they are really bad. Um, and then the base bar, which is this this thing here, it's supposed to have this beautiful even shape, and this is like really really shocking. It is super bad. So the the purpose of the base bar is to transfer the sound from here across into these tips. So so this end is supposed to be quite thin, but it's so thick on this instrument. So yeah, this this is really really dreadful, and you can see like the big split, like where the where the ply had uh, split off. So anyway, I'm gonna put it back together. Uh, but this, I, I thought I might be able to do some work and try and improve this instrument, but it's not worth it. It's absolutely like it, yeah, improves the sound. It's it's absolutely horrible. It's uh, it's been glued together by 
PVA glue. It's been, the, the top plate's been pressed. So not normally top plates are actually hand carved. Everything's hand carved. It doesn't have edges. It doesn't have purfling. So it's really the cheapest of the cheap. And you can hear it in the sound. It, it's, it's actually quite amazing uh, with a good setup. It actually, you know, has a bearable sound, but it's never going to be a good instrument. Um, so yeah so don't don't do it like just be really careful when you buy instruments don't don't buy these super cheap instruments make sure you buy a violin by a reputable maker at least one that kind of cares about you and that uh, that makes sure that uh, that the instrument that you get is is you know is going to work well for you i mean you know it gets so frustrating if you know you're trying to make beautiful music and and you have this extreme frustration if if nothing works properly. Um, anyway, uh, don't do it. It's horrible. I'm gonna. If you like this video, press the like button, press the subscribe button, and the little bell. That way, you always find out uh, when I post a new video. Awesome guys, keep making beautiful music, and hopefully, I can help educate you.